Well, hello and uh, welcome to Family Matters, another episode that uh, will be able to strengthen us in our families, strengthen us in our marriages, and will also help us to continue to stay together looking unto God because God is the author of marriage. So today, I will be able to share with you on how to build stronger marriages, how to build stronger marriages, and that is the topic that we'll be able to discuss today. And I believe that each and every one of us would like to have a stronger marriage or how to build up a stronger marriage. I've come to realize that actually marriage is what you build up. It is not what you find. And a good marriage is, a, is the one that both the husband and the wife will be able to invest into it. And when you invest into it, it becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. And so today, uh, in sharing with us on how to build stronger marriages, I would like to be able just to share with you and let you understand that actually with stronger marriages, we'll have stronger families. But in order for us to have stronger marriages, we need to have stronger individuals. In other words, we need to have strong husbands and strong wives. When I'm talking about strong, I'm not talking about physical strength, but I'm, I'm talking about phys uh, strong in understanding of what marriage is and what my part is in, play in, in the marriage. So the stronger I am in understanding the better it is for us in the marriage that will be able to be good for us in building stronger families, and stronger families will build stronger communities. And so if you want to see our communities strong, then we have to start with us as an individual. A man has to understand what it is to be a man, what it is to be a husband, and what it is to be a father. Then uh, a lady will understand what it means to be a woman, what it means to be a wife, and what it means to be a mother. And once we have an understanding of that, that strengthens us so that whenever we walk together in marriage, we are building a stronger marriage which is evolving into a stronger family that ends up evolving into a stronger community. And so today I'd like to read from Matthew chapter number 19, and in verses 3 through verses 6, a question was brought to Jesus and when the question was brought to Jesus, Jesus was answering this question. And Jesus went back to the very original part that actually defined marriage. And Matthew chapter 19, verses 3, I'm reading from the Passion Translation. It says, The Pharisees were intent on putting Jesus to the test with difficult questions. So they approached him and asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any reason? Haven't you read the scriptures about creation? Jesus replied, The creator made us male and female from the very beginning. And for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and live with his wife, and the two will become one flesh. From then on, they are no longer two, but united as one. So what God unites, let no one divide. So here the Pharisees came and they were asking Jesus a question and pretty much they were looking for any reason for a divorce. So they were asking Jesus, should a man divorce his wife for any reason? Is there any reason that we should be able to divorce? Now you understand that for them to ask this, it shows that they were looking for opportunities to be able to divorce and actually the culture at that particular time a man could divorce his wife for any reason. If they made food and there was not enough salt in the food, that was a guaranteed for divorce. And so Moses had already given them the law that pertains to divorce, but they wanted to see what Jesus' uh, approach will be in regards to this. That's why they were asking him, is there any reason a man should divorce his wife? But Jesus actually took them actually to the original part that's why Jesus was saying, haven't you read from the very beginning, the creator of the creation? His main intent was whoever he has put together, no one should be able to divide. In other words, no one should look for an opportunity to be able to separate. The reason why we are finding that to be so much common today, it is because number one, whenever we come to marriage, 
people don't have an understanding or educate themselves in what marriage is. And because people don't educate themselves to what marriage is, they just get married without the education of the marriage. But you see, the Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you and reject your children, which means ignorance is generational. If you are ignorant, you are actually passing the ignorance to the next generation. There was actually one article one time that there was a, husband, a father who was upset and saying, you know what, I've taught my child everything that I know and my child still knows nothing. Well, it was because the father has learned nothing. And so if the father has learned nothing and he's teaching his child nothing, then the child will give the father nothing. So we need to understand one thing. Whatever we learn, we need to learn it for the sake of the future. Learn for your children. Learn for your grandchildren so that the marriages can be stronger. So Jesus here was saying, haven't you read the scriptures about the creation? That the creator made us male and female from the very beginning. And for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. And therefore, when you become one, then nobody is supposed to separate you. Nothing is supposed to separate you. The reason why there is another high increase of divorce today, it's because... When we come into marriage, a lot of people come into marriage with 50-50. I'm bringing this in, you also bring that in. So I have my 50, you have your 50. If you don't bring your 50, then I'm going to take my 50 and leave, and you stay with your 50. No, when you come into marriage, you come into marriage 100%. And your spouse also comes 100%. No one is coming 50-50. People are used to saying words such like, this is my better half. Actually, it's not your better half. You are complete as a person. Your spouse is also complete as a person. And when you come together, you are coming together as one complete unit, not divided units that are going to be made whole by us bringing 50-50. We are all bringing 100%, and in bringing 100%, we all receive 100%. In marriage, you'll only receive what you brought in. You can never receive what you never brought in. And therefore, you can never bring 50 and expect your spouse to bring 50. You bring in 100%, your spouse brings 100%, and we can always expect to receive 100% because that is what we brought in. And therefore, in order for us to understand this, we have to understand that actually marriage is a covenant and marriage is never a contract. If we don't understand that marriage is a covenant, then we are going to have a lot of issues and never have a strong marriage. A covenant is simply a relationship between two people who make binding promises to each other and work together to reach that common goal. In other words, we are having a binding promise. We are bound by the promise that we have made. Versus a contract is simply an agreement between two people and it is dependent on the other party. So if we agree, for example, today that someone is going to come in and is going to paint my house, and they're going to paint my house within five hours, and they're going to paint in the shade of color that I told them, and they agree to that contract. We sign the contract, and I'm going to pay you X amount of dollars. You come in, and you are late in the first place, maybe 15 minutes late, and then you are painting it, and you never gave it the exact shade of color that we agreed upon. I don't, I'm not obligated to pay you because you never abide by the contract that we agreed upon. And therefore, for that particular matter, I will walk away from that contract. You can also agree and say, based on the contract we signed, I did not meet the recommendations, and therefore I walk away. Not so with marriage, because marriage is not a contract. Marriage is a covenant. And actually, it is not a covenant between two people. It's a covenant between three people. If you understand that marriage is a covenant between three people, it will help you be stronger yourself so that you can bring that strength into the marriage. And once you are married, you continue with that same strength so that you can continue to be stronger and stronger and nothing will be able to separate you. Why do I say it is a, a covenant, covenant between three people? Well, because Jesus here said, haven't you read from the beginning that the Creator created male and female and therefore, for this reason, a, a, a man will leave his father and mother and will cleave with to his wife and the two shall be one. So it means here that God is the author of marriage. And if God is the author of marriage, so the first covenant you really have, you have it with God. You as an individual with God. 
So God and I are in a relationship with a binding promise that I am your child and you are my father. And it is your desire that you and I become so strong and become so uh, one in unity with you in fellowship. And therefore, when I get into marriage, I'm actually translating what I have already had, a covenant with the Father, to my spouse. And therefore, it is what I have a covenant with God that I'm going to have a covenant with my spouse. And that is why it is between three people. I have a covenant with God, I have a covenant with myself, that I'm going to keep my part, God is keeping his part, and therefore I'm going to enter into this covenant now with my spouse. And so now there are three people involved in this. And in order for me to begin to look at what you're not doing, it means I am actually walking away from the covenant that I've already agreed with God. So as long as I stay with God and do my part, my spouse stays with God and do their part, guess what? This marriage is going to be strengthened because we are all, all looking at the same, same person who is God, the originator and the creator of marriage. And that will continue to strengthen us instead of us looking unto one another and beginning to quarrel, complain, or or look at things that will be able to cause us to be in discord. And therefore, covenants always divine, define obligations and commitments that are personal. I am obligated and I'm com committed to a personal agreement that is binding to me and to God and to my spouse. Therefore, when everybody keeps their part, then it helps them be able to maintain whatever they need to maintain. One of the things that is weakening people today is division. So in marriage, it is never about dividing what we have in half, but actually everything we have, you got. So if I'm having a covenant with God, I'm giving God 100%, guess what? I'm going to give my spouse 100%. I will never give my spouse 50 and give God 100 because it is one binding agreement that we have together and therefore we have to work in it together. So one of the issues that people get into is dividing things. A husband and wife will have separate bank accounts. They'll have separate hobbies. They'll have separate friends, separate goals, and they'll have separate dreams. And with this, you are running a risk of creating a completely separate life. Because if you are having things separated, guess what? We are running a risk of separating our lives because everyone is simply doing whatever is pleasing to them and we are never working to one common unity and as a result of that we are never be able to be stronger together so therefore the more we share things together the stronger our marriages will be and you've got to understand then that marriage will never be safeguarded by love we start in love but we don't end in love why because love will never safeguard your marriage it is knowledge that will safeguard your marriage. So therefore, for us to be strong, then we have to add knowledge to our marriage because if we don't add knowledge to our marriage, we will never be strong in uh, our marriage. Why? Because the problem that we are seeing today in marriages is because we don't have an, un an understanding of working through in relationships. People have understanding, uh, are difficulties with understanding who a woman is and who a man is. We have an, an, a problem with understanding uh, what to do with emotions, what to do with anger, and what to do with differences of understanding. So unless we educate ourselves in that, we will never have our marriages strong because love will never guarantee you success in a marriage, for when someone gets divorced, there is something that is stronger and powerful than the love that they had. So it means when you agree to divorce, it means the love that you had, something else that is powerful and stronger came and drew you away from the love. And therefore, you have to be able to learn and understand that. So how do we understand that? We have to find books to help us read. We have to uh, find, go to seminars that will help us build stronger marriages so that you can be able to have stronger marriages and stronger families. Uh, there's a book that I was going to introduce to you today. It's called His Needs and Her Needs. I didn't bring it with me over here, but it's a book that I was going to encourage us to be able to read. Uh, it's a very good book that actually explains, it is written by an author who is a born-again believer and also a psychologist. And he has dealt with so many marriages and he has actually found 
five essential things that all men look for and five essential things that all women look for. So in total, there are ten things. And he covers this in this book to explain actually how to build stronger marriages. And you can check this up online, buy it on uh, uh, Amazon, or you can buy it in a bookstore. It, uh, the title is His Needs and Her Needs. That book will give you an understanding of some of the things that make men men and some of the things that make women women. And it also gives you an understanding of, 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 of who we really are and when we get into marriage, how we can work our marriages together in the essential parts that actually make a man a man and a woman a woman. So many times we just want to stay in prayer, and prayer is good, we need to pray. But you've got to understand, in prayer, pray with an understanding. Because if you don't have an understanding in prayer, then your prayer is going to be a miss. So it is always good to pray when you have an understanding. And therefore, if you're going to build stronger marriages today, we have to be able to invest in education educating ourselves. I need to understand what my spouse is. I need to understand uh, how a woman functions and how a woman uh, goes through in her understanding because just the way we respond to things is difference between a male and a female. And the more we invest into understanding who our spouses are and the more we understand, invest into who we are, it will help us become stronger in understanding so that when we begin to communicate and function in a family and in a marriage, we are a stronger unit that can never be divided or separated. So with that, I'm believing that our families will continue to be stronger. And so I'd like to encourage you that today and encourage you to invest in yourself. Read books. Most of the problems you are going through today are in a book somewhere in your house or in a library that you have not read yet. And therefore, if you can just invest in that, it will make you stronger in understanding. And when you're stronger in understanding, then nothing can simply separate you. I believe that this has been an encouragement to you. It will help you become a, a stronger person in your marriage and help you build a stronger family as well. And if you're not married, you begin to invest early in life because the more you understand this, it helps you easier while you get into marriage. So you stay blessed, have a wonderful time with your family, and I pray that the joy of the Lord will be your strength and revelation knowledge will establish you in the strength of your marriage. Stay blessed and have a wonderful evening. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Family Matters. Check back next month for a new episode. 